If you've been to a Cats Roadshow, you've probably seen this set before, maybe a few times, because I've used it a lot. It's the perfect mock-up for demonstrating crown installation techniques. We're actually going to break this down into three separate steps. Measuring it, making a cut list, setting up your saw for cutting crown molding, and cutting crown, both at your miter saw and coping it with a jigsaw as well, with a Collins coping foot. So let's get started with that cut list. Before we can make a cut list, we have to identify what types of pieces we have, what kind of language we're going to use. So let's look at this piece right here. This is kind of a strange one. It goes from an inside corner here to what looks like an outside corner, but really, this is a self-return because it self-returns right to the wall here, just slightly back from the ceiling, so that the crown molding doesn't come proud of the ceiling. So this is a self-return cut, which looks like an outside corner, but it's measured differently. It's actually measured from the inside corner here to the very furthest extension of the outside corner at the top of the crown molding. This is very unusual for crown, because crown molding is normally measured at the bottom, always at the bottom. For instance, look at this piece here. It runs from an inside corner to an outside corner at this end. It's measured along the bottom of the crown molding, from the inside corner to the outside corner, just like this piece here. This piece here is an outside corner to a butt cut at this inside corner. So it's measured along the wall at the bottom of the crown molding. Crown molding is never measured at the top. It's always measured at the bottom where it hits the wall, where it runs along the wall. Except, in this one exception, where it's measured to the top of a self-return. The furthest projection of a self-return. Let's look at this a little bit closer, even. There's another piece here, too. There's this piece right here at the very end of the self-return. This is the piece that I call the cap. It's what caps the self-return, and that's the first piece that we want to put onto our cut list. So let's take our cut list right now, and we'll start writing these measurements down right on this board. This first piece is the cap. On the left side, on this side of it, it's got a butt cut. And on the right side of it, it's got an outside corner. So this first piece is a self-return cap. So I'm going to write SR for self-return, and I'm going to write down cap. And on the left side of that, it has to have a butt cut. And on the right side, it's an outside corner to mate up with the next outside corner. So let's measure this second piece next. It measures, well, the wall measures six and a quarter all the way to here. But I want this piece to end about an eighth of an inch or so back from the corner there. So let's make this one six and an eighth. We'll write that down on the cut list next. And when we write it down, let's note what the corners are. On the left side of this piece, out here, it has an outside corner. It looks just like an outside corner, but remember, it's measured to the longest point. And on the right side, it has an inside corner. Let's put this on the cut list right now. So that piece measures six and an eighth. And we put that measurement right in the middle. And on the left side, it has a self-return. It looks like an outside corner, but it's measured to the longest point of the outside corner. And on the right side, it's got an inside corner. I'm going to put a little check mark there for an inside corner. This is the third piece. And it goes from an inside corner on the left to an outside corner on the right. And it measures six inches. So let's put that on our cut list now. This measures six inches, and we put that measurement right in the middle of the cut list. And on the left side, it has an inside corner. And on the right side, it has an outside corner. So notice that on the left side, this piece has an inside corner, and it mates up with the inside corner that's on the right side of this piece. And this piece measures four inches. It has an outside corner on the left side. If you're looking directly at the piece, on the left side, it has an outside corner, and on the right side, it has a butt cut. So let's put that on our cut list now. Four inches. 
and it has an outside corner on the left and it has a butt cut on the right. That's because we're going to cope into that piece. And now we should talk about the difference between coping your inside corners and mitering your inside corners. I want to demonstrate two different techniques here for installing crown molding. The first technique I want to show you, and that we're going to work with once we start cutting, is pre-assembling your crown molding, like we did around this little outside corner here, this little jog in this wall, and this self-return. This whole piece here is pre-assembled. And the second technique that I want to show you is coping, because really when you're running crown around a room, most of your joinery is going to be cope cut. When you pre-assemble crown, you always cut it with miters and you're able to glue and nail those from behind before you install the crown. That's what I mean by pre-assembling. Whereas in a big room, you're going to cope your joinery and that's what this piece is going to be. We're going to demonstrate how to cope this piece into this piece and that's why this piece is cut with a butt cut on the right hand end. And all we have to do is measure that one last piece and that's this piece right here that runs from the bottom of that one all the way to the corner here, so it measures 39 and an eighth. So we'll take that measurement and we'll put it right here at the bottom of our cut list, 39 and an eighth. And it has a butt cut on the right and we're gonna cope this piece so it has a cope cut on the left. When we get to the miter saw, we won't have to close our eyes to try and remember what cut goes on which end of the crown. We'll have it right on the cut list along with the measurements. I'll show you what I mean as soon as we get to that saw. But we got one other thing we got to talk about first. So let's pull this piece off and we'll take a closer look at these miters. This is the same piece we just had up there, and it was sitting just like this. Here's that self-return cap. Here's the self-return that goes from an inside corner to kind of like an outside corner. And here's the, here's the next piece that goes from an inside corner cut here to an outside corner there. And here's the piece that goes from the outside corner to the butt cut that we're going to cope into. Now let's look at these miters on the bottom, because it's the bottom of the crown that really tells the story. Notice how on an outside corner, the miter, the short point of the miter, is always at the back of the molding. On an outside corner, the short point is what you measure to and what you cut to. Notice on this inside corner, now look real close, notice how the long point, the long point of the miter is at the back of the molding. So you measure to the long point, you measure to the long point, and you cut to the long point for an inside corner. Okay, we've got our cut list now and we're ready to go to the saw. The next step is to set up the saw so that we can't make any mistakes when we go to cut the molding. 